ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm John Weeks, and this is The Leader. Super sour sweets, massive marshmallows, all the chocolate you can eat. If you want to indulge in ultra processed, high sugar chocolate sweets and treats shipped all the way over from the US, there's one place that has it all London's Oxford Street. Post pandemic, the world's most famous shopping promenade appears to have been overrun with the brightly coloured candy stores selling the kind of things you can only get in the States. But if you push back the candy canes, peer around the jar of gobstoppers behind the till, it won't take you long to discover the dark side of the American candy stores seem to have overtaken the city's landmark high street. An investigation led by the Evening Standard's senior news correspondent, Anthony France, has been looking into just that, the sale of illegal goods and money laundering taking place behind the gaudy exteriors of some of these shops. Sorry, I'm from the Evening Standard newspaper. Uh, We're just asking about business rates. He's been going from shop to shop to finally get some answers about this illegal activity, which is costing Westminster Council millions in unpaid business rates and also affecting legitimate stores operating on the same street. Yeah, um, this, this the, problem, the problem on Oxford Street is that a lot of businesses are not paying their, their business rates and the council are quite concerned about it. Um, this is one of them. Um, uh, what, what, what's going to happen? As well as this, Anthony has been finding out how London authorities are fighting back to stop this illegal activity and the Roblox officials face when it comes to dealing with such criminality. So, first of all, Anthony, can you just tell us what you've discovered about these candy shops that are all along Oxford Street? So we set out to find out why these uh, US-style candy shops uh, were blighting Oxford Street. Um, They are, um, according to the council, um, you know, shops that are known for money laundering. Uh, They're known to sell counterfeit goods and they're also known to sell uh, vapes uh, with excess amounts of uh, tobacco in them. So very unsafe and certainly shouldn't be on uh, a shopping precinct uh, that is considered one of the best in the world. And can you tell us about some of the interactions with the staff in these shops? Because I understand you've been in to sort of try to speak with them and find out what, what the deal is with them. What have they sort of said and what has happened when you've gone in? So as soon as we walked into the shops to find out who the owners were so we could put serious questions to them, um, we were storm- stonewalled um, pretty much. Um, the staff were trained uh, not to give out any information about who owns the business Um, And as we were told by the councillors, you know, even revealing a name, you know, could bring the whole thing tumbling down, as in terms of the shell companies that are ultimately behind these businesses. And you mentioned earlier the sort of counterfeit goods that they were selling. How exactly were they selling them? Because if you you go into a sweet shop and come out with a vape pen, how does that work? How were they sort of doing it on the sly, I guess? People would walk into the shops and, for example, you might see what you consider to be a bargain, an iPhone charger, uh, for example. But, of course, it's not an iPhone charger. It's not made by Apple. And if you take this home, you know, you may find that it explodes in your socket. And on the money laundering front, can you give us an idea of just the scale of, of that money laundering in terms of the business rates that are going unpaid because of them? So when when these shops first started appearing in 2017, it was a result of, you know, huge shops like British Home Stores closing down and the big names disappearing from the high street. The landlords, the people who own the buildings, they were stuck with buildings where they were paying business rates. And so what they decided to do was that they would give up the businesses for free to these candy shops on the basis that they would actually pay the business rates. And that never happened. And in fact, all of the uh, businesses on uh, Oxford, of these candy shops and souvenir shops, uh, owe Westminster Council £9.2 million in unpaid business rates. The council also say that they are behind 
money laundering, dirty money that, that is used in, for example, drugs, guns and prostitution, basically cleaning that money and getting it out of the UK. And if you notice that in some of the shops that we went past, there are foreign currency terminals and the council say that that's where the money is going and it obviously gets distributed around the world. Let's take a break now. In part two, Anthony explains what councils and the government can actually do to stop these illegal activities and tells us just how severely this illegal activity is impacting legitimate candy stores also operating on Oxford Street. Their uh, CEO is adamant that he is actually behind the um, clamp clamp down that's happening at the moment because it's affected business. He's saying that sales have slumped by over 80% in central London. Um, It's having a real impact on, on them. So in terms of cracking down on this issue, what is it that the councils and the government can actually do about these businesses? So one thing that the um, the council are very, very interested in is how is it so easy for somebody to set up a company and set up a business? I mean, in fact, they're saying that there are less checks on people opening businesses, these sort of businesses, than there are if you wanted to borrow a library book in Westminster. So they're saying that the government who ultimately run the company's house must make it much harder for people to use false names to set up businesses. And also they're calling on the National Crime Agency as well to have a real deep dive into the people who own these businesses and effectively follow the money trail. So if the government and company's house were to base their model off getting a Westminster library card. Uh, what checks could they bring in to stop these these false names being applied to these these companies? Because that was one of the things that shocked me in the article was just how easy it was. I didn't realise you could just set up a company with a fake name. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for example, if, if you wanted to borrow a library book, you know, you'd have to come along with your driving licence, uh, your passport, um, you know, some sort of proof of address, and you don't have to do that to set up one of these companies. So even that would be a a start, you know, to to basically say that you are a legitimate business person. Based on your article, Anthony, you're not expecting these businesses to go away. What is it they do to sort of maintain uh, their their businesses, whether it is money laundering or otherwise? Well, I think now there is very much a change as Westminster Council um, are identified, i.e. the landlords don't really want to be identified with these businesses. And I think ultimately when... Um, you know, the Oxford Street is booming again. You know, the Elizabeth line is bringing millions of people in there. And I think what will happen is there will be a change as people swap online that people did in the pandemic shopping, start coming back onto Oxford Street. I think very much that the, that, that may be the, um, the driver. I mean, we've seen the number of shops have gone down by four this month. So, you know, just just even the landlords just don't, not wanting to be associated with them um, anymore might actually be the driver to some change. And I understand on top of the business rates and I suppose just the, the, the dodgy electricals and the bad sort of press almost it gives for Oxford Street, it's also affecting businesses, the legitimate ones who are selling American sweets. Uh, of those legitimate ones, what have you heard from them and what have they sort of told you about it? Yeah, so when we went down to Oxford Street um, twice to ask questions and to find out who the owners were, we only heard back from one, um, and that was Kingdom of Sweets. And in fact, their uh, CEO is adamant that he is actually behind the um, clamp clamp down that's happening at the moment because it's affected business. He's saying that sales have slumped by over 80% in central London. Um, It's having a real impact on, on them. So, you know, Yes, there is a, there's very much, you know, the good guys rather than the cowboys, um, you know, definitely want change. There's more news, interviews and analysis in the Evening Standard newspaper and, of course, online at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. Thanks for listening. We're back tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock. <laughs>